Hi, this is Delene with McDonald's Sewing and Vacuum, and I want to show you today how to get set up and start using the Jade 20. This is a Husqvarna Viking machine, and it's one of my favorites. <clears throat> when you take it out of the box, it's going to look like this. Um, it's a really well-designed machine, I think. Um, on the back, there's a little knob that you turn, and to open up the machine, you pull this piece out. This actually includes enough storage right here in this piece to hold your foot control and your power cord and all of your accessories <clears throat> and then fold up into its own hard case. So it's very convenient for people who have to put their stuff away and uh, get it back out again when they're sewing. So once you've got the foot control out and I have it plugged in on this side and the um, power cord goes over on the right side too. There's a switch right above it. And when you turn it on, uh, often it will say up because the foot is down. So there is a um, lever right back here for the presser foot. You lift that up, turn the hand wheel on the right to lift up the needle, and then it's ready to go. If you're new to sewing, um, uh, you're going to need to know how to thread the machine, and actually every machine threads a little differently. So I'm going to show you how to thread this machine and how to wind a bobbin. And those are two things we need to do before we can do anything else. So this spool is a spool of good quality thread, and you do want to use good quality thread. We can help you figure, figure out what that is. But this particular spool is cross-wound, so it's wound so the threads go back and forth. And in that case, we're going to put the spool on in a horizontal position. If you have a straight wound uh, spool of thread where the threads just go straight around the spool, then it's going to go up into the up upright position. So since this is cross wound, I'm going to lay it back down. Um, <clears throat> to thread the machine, it's actually pretty simple. I'm just going to bring my thread in but I want to back up and say one thing that's really, really important. When you're getting ready to thread the top of the machine, you need to make sure that the foot is up. Most modern machines come with uh, tension discs, and uh, they're inside the machine there. And when you put the foot down, those, those discs clamp shut. To thread your machine, you want to make sure those are open. So when the foot is up, those tension discs are open and you can get the thread in between them. Um, that tension is what allows you to have a perfect stitch between it and the bobbin thread. Okay, so I'm going to take my thread uh, and just bring it back through this area right here. And it's really nice. They've put arrows on the machine, so we're going to go this way, up around this plastic section, down through this little gap right there. And then we come back up and around, and there's something in here that you'll be able to see on your machine that's called a take-up lever. So you want to make sure the thread gets caught in the take-up lever. Then when I get down here, since I'm already past those tension discs, I like to put the foot down because what that does is it clamps down on the thread and it doesn't keep spooling out while you're trying to thread the needle. There is a guide right in front of the needle here, a little wire guide that you want to get the thread into. And then it comes with a threader. Um, so what I'm going to do is pull that piece down and forward. Um, and it brings a, a small piece right here uh, up to wrap around the needle. It needs to come all the way forward and wrap around the needle like that. It's very difficult to see, but there's a tiny little wire hook in there that comes in through the needle, the hole in the needle, the eye of the needle, and um, grabs this thread. So I'm going to take my thread from the, the guide right in front of the needle, wrap it around this little metal point right there, and in between the two prongs of that threader. Then I'm going to hold lightly with the thread with my right hand, and lift up on the threader with my left hand. It's going to create a loop back there. And I like to keep a set of tweezers with my sewing machine 
actually it's in my pocket most of the time <laughs> because I use them so much with sewing. And you can take those tweezers and pull that thread on through to the back. Um, if you hold on to it too tightly, it might thread it and then pop back out. So that's something you need to be careful with. So that's threading the needle. The next thing we need to do is wind a bobbin. Uh, I have the A foot on the machine right now. The, the feet are all labeled. They're a little bit difficult to see, but they're all labeled with letters right here on the uh, foot. And it's a raised metal um, embossing. Um, so I've pulled my thread to the back and under the needle, or under the needle and under the foot. This machine's really nice because you can actually wind a bobbin without unthreading the machine. So I'm going to show you how that works. You want to make sure that you have the thread going under the metal foot, and you only want to do this with a metal foot. Uh, you can actually rip right through a plastic foot. <clears throat> how do I know this? Because I've done it. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're using metal foot and the thread goes under the, under the foot. It's going to come up here across these metal bars. Those bars are there just to protect your thread or your machine uh, so it won't have grooves worn in it while you're threading the machine. Then it comes into this little um, uh, guide right there in front of the bobbin. And then I did this without really talking about it. Uh, these work a little bit better, these bobbins, if you put the thread from the center out through the hole in one side. So it's just threading it through that. And then it goes down onto this pin right here. That's the bobbin winder. And when it's ready to wind and all lined up, you just move the bobbin to the right. And there's a button right here called the start stop button. You can press that. And the bobbin starts to wind up here. I'm still holding on to the end of the thread. I do that until it's wound on a little bit, and then I trim that thread off and let it wind the rest of the way. The bobbin won't stop by itself. Uh, it won't stop winding by itself, so you do need to watch it. Um, you don't have to let it wind all the way. I'm actually going to stop here, so I'm going to press the start stop button. Then we move the bobbin back over to the left to take it out of bobbin winding mode and they have conveniently put a little cutter right here. So I'm just going to cut the thread there and I've got the bobbin wound. There's a little black button right here on the stitch plate and you're going to pull that to the right and that pops the lid of the bobbin case off. I like to think of um, loading this in as if this uh, the thread's making a P with the bobbin or you can think of it as counterclockwise or over the top to the left. Everybody kind of has a different way of trying to remember that. This is a drop-in bobbin, so literally you will take the bobbin and just drop it right into the bobbin case like that. Now right now it's just spinning really loosely. It's really important for you to get the bobbin thread into the tension guide down here. It's just as important as the one up here. So I'm going to take my thread and there's a little gray portion plastic guide right there. I'm just going to run it under that guide and with my finger on top I can hear or feel it click into the tension and now instead of spinning loosely it comes out in a, in a measured way. I'm going to go ahead and wrap my thread around this other guide and there are arrows on your machine to show you that and then the top piece has little tabs that go into that guide. You push it down and it, the bobbin's in there, and if you want, then you can just uh, cut your bobbin thread just like that by uh, pulling it to the left. And we're ready to sew. So the first thing I want to show you is how to use the sewing advisor that comes with the J20. That's this piece up here, and there's even more information in your manual, so you'll want to refer to that. But this is just a nice quick help. So right here, under the sewing machine portion, you can select the type of fabric that you're going to be working on. For right now, we're going to sew a straight seam on a piece of medium weight woven fabric. Uh, so woven medium is this first icon or picture up here 
The one right underneath it is woven heavy. We'll use that later. That would be like denim, uh, canvas, heavier types of woven fabric. This little picture is indicating the, um, the settings for lightweight knit fabric. And the one on the bottom is for heavier weight knit. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this medium weight knit. And this next column here is the presser foot pressure. The thing that, this is your presser foot. And when you put the foot down, uh, the machine exerts a little bit of pressure on your fabric. And then the feed dogs help pull the fabric through. You need a different amount of pressure depending on the type of fabric that you're using. And there is a knob over here on the left that I can't really show you right now, but it um, controls that pressure. Uh, it says to set it to N. I know I checked before we started. It's set to N over here. So we're in good shape for that. Then for a straight stitch on a woven medium fabric, I'm going to choose stitch number one. Stitch num the stitch numbers are controlled with this little keypad right here. I'm going to touch number one. When you turn the machine on, it defaults to a straight stitch, so yours might already say number one. Then right next to that, it tells you what type of foot to, or which foot to use. Uh, it says we need the A foot, and that's the foot I have here. Next to that is the tension setting. This is your tension knob right here. This helps you control the tension for the top part of the machine. Um, and it says to set that to four, somewhere between four and five. So I need to actually move that a little bit uh, to it's in the four to five range. The next thing I want to show you, this is the stitch length. That's what this picture means. And the stitch length you can control right here. Do you see there's the same picture right here on the front of the machine? And the default stitch length for a straight stitch is 2.5 millimeters. But to increase that, you press you can press the plus sign or to de decrease it, you press the minus sign button. When the um, stitch is at its default setting, this little light will be off. If you have moved it away from its default setting, there will be a little light show right there. So I'm going to go back to the default, which is 2.5. Okay. I'm not going to make any changes to that. Now the next column here is for um, the width of your stitch. Um, and here is where you would control that. There's the same picture. It looks kind of like a zigzag stitch. And you would control the width of your stitch right here. A straight stitch doesn't have a width. <clears throat> so what this does, I'll show you in a minute, but what this does when you're using a straight stitch is it allows you to move your needle uh, and your stitch position. Okay, so I've got everything set the way I want it to sew a straight seam. And so I'm going to put my fabric under the foot. Uh, there are lots of nice markings here for distances. I'm just going to use about a half inch right now. And I am put the foot down. And I'm just going to use my foot control um, to, to sew a straight stitch. And I'm not trying to get it perfectly straight. Um, I'm OK if it's not totally straight. So I finished that, and the Viking people are wonderful. They put another little cutter right over here. So if you don't have your scissors right there, you can just bring your thread through that and cut. One thing you want to look at um, is looking at your stitches. You don't want to see the bottom thread or the bobbin thread coming up to the top very much, and you don't want to see it loose. Um, so this stitching looks really pretty good. I think we've got a nice, good straight stitch. Now, a minute ago, I said that uh, when you're doing a straight stitch, that these uh, buttons right here control the stitch position or the needle position. So right now, I'm going to just sew a little bit. And I love this feature. Here's another feature that I love about this machine. This button right here controls the needle position when you stop. And I love to activate, I almost always use it with the needle act down activated, because what it does is when you sew, uh, it will stop with the needle down. The one time I don't use it is when I want to change my needle position. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to move the needle to the left, 
and by pressing this zero or this minus button right here you can move the needle over and I'm going to go ahead and stitch there so you can see that I'll show you that in a minute now I'm going to go back to the default which is 0, 0.0 for a straight stitch and I'm going to move it over to the right and I'm going to take it over as far as it'll go and it will stop you it's a really smart machine it won't let you sew onto that foot so it'll stop you when you've gone as far as you can go with that foot okay and let me just cut that thread again and now you can see here's where I started I moved the needle to the left a little bit and then I moved it to the right a little bit and down so you have all kinds of control over where your stitches go okay so the next thing I want to show you is um, how to sew on a lightweight knit this is a really stretchy lightweight trico knit fabric and if you remember I told you that <clears throat> we can uh, choose different fabrics for different purposes um, this is our lightweight knit picture and so over here I'm going to actually have to change this to a two so it's going to actually create less pressure on the presser foot so the fabric will move through a little bit easier uh, so I've done that. The next one is for a straight stitch on a lightweight knit, they recommend stitch number two. So I'm going to touch number two down here and it changes the stitch. It also moves the needle over to the left. The next setting that I need to look at is for what foot to use, and I'm still using the A foot, so I'm going to leave that there. Um, the tension is between four and six. I think we're okay there. The stitch length default length is two and a half 2.5 and the stitch width there is now a width to the stitch which is 3.5 i can increase that or decrease it as i wish but i'm going to leave it at the default setting okay so i am ready now to stitch a hem on this trico fabric so i'm going to line it up under my foot put the foot down and just let the machine go. One of the wonderful things is I don't have to push or pull this knit fabric through. When I first started sewing on knit fabrics back in the 70s, it was really hard. And uh, you had to kind of help it through. And I can even just let the machine go. I don't have to guide it because it will go pretty straight all by itself anyway. So I'm going to take it out, cut the thread. I missed that one. And now the nice thing about using this slight zigzag, you still have a straight stitch, but look at the hem. I have a slightly stretchy hem, which means that when I go to put this garment on or use it in some way, it's not going to pop those stitches out. Um, so that's a really beautiful looking stitch. Okay, the next thing that uh, people really like to sew on denim or often have to sew on denim, I don't know, my brother's six two, but for some reason I always have to hem his pants and jeans for him. Uh, so this is a woven heavy denim, and it really is a heavyweight denim. So I'm going to have to make some changes again. I'm going to change the presser foot pressure back to N, which is right there. I'm going to select stitch number one again, but this time it's telling me to use the B foot. So the feet are really easy to take on and uh, take off and put back on. To take a foot off, I actually use my right hand and push from behind and then catch the foot with my left hand. The B foot and the A foot look a lot alike. People often ask me that what the differences are. The uh, main visible difference is that the A foot is smooth on the back and the B foot has a groove down the middle of it that allows thicker stitches and fabrics to pass under it. The B foot also has a few more markings on it, and sometimes it's referred to as an applique foot. So um, there's a little bar right here in the middle that fits right into this little white piece of the ankle right there. So I'm gonna put the foot on the ankle, and you just push it in, and it's ready to go. I'm gonna take my thread. You're always gonna be happier if you take your thread through the foot and to the back before you start sewing. Uh, it'll help keep the thread from getting knotted up underneath. 
Okay. So now I'm going to pretend uh, on jeans, sometimes not these so much, but you'll have a flat felled seam that kind of comes down the side. So this is, this is three layers of denim that I'm going to be sewing on right here. And I want to activate that needle down. Okay, and I'm going to keep going. And I'm not helping it at all. It's just moving through nicely. Okay, so I've got that seam fixed and I'm going to raise my needle and cut my thread. Now, if you're going to hem a pair of jeans, I'm sure you've experienced that. If you've done it before, if you haven't, here's something to think about. So I've got three layers right here. To do a rolled hem, I'm going to roll it up once. That's six layers of denim right there. One more time, that's nine layers of denim that I'm going to have to sew through. Okay, And this is pretty heavy stuff. Okay, so I'm going to put my thread back, and I am definitely going to use the needle down position. The other tool that I highly recommend for this is, I call it a multi-purpose tool. Um, we're going to use it to help get over the hump. Some people call it a hump jumper. <laughs> uh, it's a button read. There are all kinds of names for it. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing my hem and when I get to the point where the foot starts to really climb like this in the front that's when I use this tool. I'm going to lift the foot up, pick up the tool and I'm going to use, it's got a narrow end and a wider end. For this I'm going to use the narrower end. I'm going to slide that under the foot. You can see that levels that foot out. I'm going to put the foot back down and I'm going to keep sewing. If I can find the sweet spot on my foot, <laughs> there we go. Okay, there we go. Foot control and I were uh, not having the same conversation right there. But look at that. No skip stitches. I didn't break a needle. And it looks just like your store-bought jeans if you had the right color thread and stuff. Okay, so that's, that's a denim uh, seam or hem. The next thing I want to show you is how to make a buttonhole. Um, and buttonholes aren't just for buttons anymore. <laughs> Some people use them in craft projects to make ribbon casings, or uh, you can even use them in a pair of pajama pants to make holes for a tie if you want to have a tie in your pajama pants. So there's a lot of uses for buttonholes that um, are not just for buttons. Oh, I'm going to take that foot off anyway, so let me go ahead and take that foot off. We're going to use uh, the buttonhole foot. All right, so to select a buttonhole, this time I'm going to choose the buttonhole right here, but we also have available on the machine our uh, four other types of buttonholes. So, uh, But we're just going to use a basic buttonhole right now. If I touch the question mark, it's actually going to tell me what foot to use. And this is the C foot. We also have the old style of uh, button buttonhole foot. Um, I don't use that one, but it's there for people who prefer to do it that way. Um, okay, so the first thing you want to do with this foot is take your button, pull this, and pull this white plastic piece away from the main part of the foot. I'm going to take my button, and this one has a shank on the back, so I'm just going to put it in upside down. And then I bring this forward till it holds the button into uh, the foot. What this does is it um, tells the machine how big to make your buttonhole. So here is the same <clears throat> metal bar here that we used before, and I'm going to slide this foot in. To that spot and pop it in. Uh, for best results they suggest that you take your thread and thread it through the hole in the foot, which I'll be honest I don't always do this because it's kind of a pain so I'm not going to do it right now. So do as I say not as I do um, on that one. Okay so the next thing I need to do right over here behind the uh, threader is another piece and it's just a plain metal bar 
You just pull straight down on that and make sure it lands in between this piece of plastic and the other piece of plastic on that foot. So what that's doing now is that's going to stop the foot when it gets long enough for the button. All right. So once we've got that set, the other thing to keep in mind with a buttonhole is it's going to start at the front and go backwards first. So I'm going to have my button, I would have my buttonhole marked uh, if I were doing this on a garment or a project. So I'm going to have my buttonhole start here and go back that way. So you want to place the needle at the starting point, put the foot down, and then I really like, prefer to use the start stop button for this because the machine knows when to stop. My foot doesn't always know. Okay, so here we go. It's going backwards first, and then it's coming forward. And the reason it does this is to make a perfectly symmetrical buttonhole. So because it sews both sides in the same direction, they end up being the same distance. And there we go, it's done its fix. I'm gonna pick up the needle, and there we go, beautiful buttonhole. This is a trick someone showed me a long time ago, but it really makes it, makes it really easy to cut your buttonholes. If you take a pin, straight pin, and just slide it in right in front of the bar tack, that's gonna help you Open it up. Um, your machine actually comes with a seam ripper. So take your seam ripper and you're gonna, I just poke right a hole right there at the other end and push through until I get to the pin. And there we go, a buttonhole all ready for your button. And it's just the right size. So I'm done. I'm not gonna make any more buttonholes. To take this foot off, you need to remember to push this metal bar up. I'm going to try to do that with my right hand. And then this piece just push forward. I'm going to take my button out just so you can see that it really is the perfect size for that button. Pretty cool. Okay, that's a buttonhole. All right, so the next thing I want to show you um, is how to do a seam and overcast stitch on this machine. Uh, we're going to be attaching this to, we're going to think about this as being the bottom of a sleeve for a sweatshirt, and we're going to attach the ribbing to that. That's ribbing, by the way. Okay. So I'm going to select my fabric again. Uh, back up here to this quick guide. This is a knit, heavyweight knit. So I need to change the presser foot pressure to one, which means I'm going to go over here and turn it to the one. Um, I'm going to select stitch two again. Actually, no, I don't want that straight stitch. I said a seam and overcast. The seam and overcast is right here. So these are the settings I need to use for that. Um, so I'm gonna select stitch number eight. Um, it, it's suggesting the B foot. So I'm gonna get that B foot back out. There it is. And put it back on and thread my, put my thread through there again. Okay, back up here, got the B foot. The tension needs to be between four and five. The stitch length, default length is gonna be 3.0, but you can adjust that. And then the stitch width is uh, 5.0, but we're gonna change that to six, okay? So what this will do is it's gonna sew a seam and finish the edge for you all at the same time. So it's a kind of a time-saving process here. I'm lining my fabric up so it's right about on the middle red line of the foot. And I'm just gonna start sewing. Now, I'm gonna, this is one of the reasons I like sewing with the needle down activated, is because now I need to keep stretching out my ribbing fabric. And if I were doing this on a big piece, I would probably pin it, but for this little demo, I'm not gonna worry about pins. So we're just sewing a seam and at the same time finishing the edge, just like a serger would do. Uh, for anyone who's familiar with or used a serger, this is about as close as you can get to having a serger without having one. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so we got to the end there. I'm going to turn the wheel to pick my foot up. I could also push this button and it would bring that needle back up. Trim my thread. And so there you can see, you can tell where I started talking a little bit more, but it's not going to show. So here's the seam along the edge, and then I've stitched over the edging to finish that seam so it won't ravel. Now here's the fun. So and look, you've got a sleeve already. Uh, all you have to do is, is do your hem or your sleeve seam. This machine also will take a twin needle. Uh, I'm not going to show you that today. That's a little bit more advanced technique, but you could finish, make a really professional looking finish by taking a twin needle and just stitching along there. So that's doing a seam plus overcast. Okay, the last really basic technique I'm going to show you is how to do a blind hem. And now a blind hem is where you have hemmed uh, a garment like a pair of dress pants or a skirt and the hem doesn't show on the front. The stitching doesn't show on, on the front. And I'm using a contrasting thread so you can see this. Okay, so I just happen to know that and you can look in your book if it will help you, but I know that this is the blind hem stitch right here. So um, that is stitch number 13. So this time I'm going to type the two numbers into the machine. So I'm going to type 1, 3, and you can actually see what that stitch is going to look like right up here on the stitch guide. So this is where more advanced and some of your decorative stitches are going to show. Okay, so I've got, I've selected my stitch. I need to select a woven medium fabric because this is a nice medium wool fabric. So I need to push that back to, put that back to N. Presser foot pressure is now at N and that's back here. Um, let's see, my tension needs to be between two and four. So I'm gonna move this back over between two and four. The default stitch length is 3.5 and the stitch width they recommend is 3.0. I think for most people who do this the first time, I would suggest you change your stitch width all the way up to four. It's just a little easier to do that way. And then the last thing um, is we need to use the D foot. So I'm going to take the B foot off. The D foot's right here and I want to show you this foot, I don't know if you can tell, but the, this left side of the foot is raised up smaller and it's also raised a little higher than the right side of the foot. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to fold this in a minute a little more carefully, but when you're ready to stitch this, the foot needs to line up so that the left side of the foot is riding on top of the fold and the right side of the foot is hugged right up next to it. Okay, so I'm going to put the D foot on. It goes on the same way all the other feet do. Pull my thread through into the back. Now, to do the folding, um, there are lots of good YouTube videos on how to set up your hem. But um, the, I've already, let's say I've already marked my hem and I'm getting ready to stitch it. What I need to do is fold the main fabric. I'm on the wrong side of the fabric. I need to fold that back and away from the hem so that I have the hem stitching sticking out here on the right side and I've got the fold of the fabric uh, right on the left. Now again, I'm going to line the foot up so that the right side of the foot snugs right up next to the fold. Put the foot down. I do like to use the needle down position for this too. And probably you would have pins in this. By the way, since I mentioned pins, Viking strongly recommends that you don't sew over your pins. So take them out as you go. <clears throat> All right, so here I go. I'm going to stitch. So it's going to stitch along in the hem and reach over every so often and grab a little bit of that fold. Okay. Another nice thing about, uh, I didn't mention this before, but the nice thing about drop-in bobbins is that you can actually sew onto and off of the edge of your fabric without the thread getting all knotted up. Okay, so that's what the stitch looks like. 
on from the back as I open that fold up and when I turn it around there we go even though I use turquoise thread on pink fabric you can only see it in a couple of places and if I had matched my thread to my fabric you wouldn't see that at all I've got a nice hem I actually missed it in a couple of places <laughs> so that's where you would need to practice a little bit more um, and it does take a little bit of practice so don't worry if you don't get it right the first time a lot of us love to quilt and um, one of my favorite things to do in quilting is uh, machine applique. Uh, I like doing it on the machine because it looks much neater. So for this, I'm just going to go back to select a straight stitch. I'm going to set myself up for woven medium, which is right here. My presser foot pressure is at N. I've got stitch one. I'm going to select stitch the B foot actually this time for applique. So I'm going to put that foot on. I'm going to pull the thread back through it and I'm going to leave the other uh, settings at the default and activate the needle down position. So here's my fabric. Uh, my, let's pretend this is my quilt block and I'm going to applique this little square on top of it. Um, there are a lot of stitches that you can use for machine applique. One of the favorite ones that quilters like to use is stitch number 24. So I'm going to type in 24. Whoops, I typed 26. Let's try that again. 24. There we go. And uh, it's going to stitch this kind of, some people call it a blanket stitch. Other people call it an e-stitch. Um, the important thing with applique is what I generally like to do is line up the edge of my applique piece with the center line on the B foot right there. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to start right on the edge and put the, my needle down so I know I have it where I want it. And I've got that middle line lined up with the applique. And I'm just going to start sewing. And what it's going to do is sew a couple of stitch and re stitches and then reach over and grab that applique to tack it down. Now, when I get to the end of the applique, um, knowing when to turn used to be kind of a challenge for me until I found out that these lines here on the foot, on the B foot, have a purpose. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and sew until my blue applique piece lines up with that line right there on the foot. And then when it's there, I want to stop with my needle down and to the right. So I actually used the hand wheel to move it over, but hopefully you can see right here is the applique and there's the line. I've got my needle down, so my fabric's not going to move when I lift the foot up, and then I can just pivot the fabric and start, and look at that, I've got it exactly lined up with the middle line on that foot. Next stitch I really like to use for applique are some of these satin stitches. Uh, the ball and chain is what this one is called, that's number 63. And what it does is just finishes with a satin stitch and stitches a couple of stitches in between each satin, each satin ball. And it adds a decorative element to your applique that's really quite nice. And so then you want to turn and line things up the way uh, you like. But you can use many, many different stitches for applique. You don't have to just use a straight stitch or a blanket stitch. So let me give you a little close up here on those stitches. So here's, you can see the blanket stitch there, and here's the ball and chain satin stitch. Another one that's really popular is the hearts. So play, have a little bit of fun, and decorate your work. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you today is um, I know I get quilters in who often say, oh, I don't need any of those decorative stitches. I just want the straight stitches. Well, I really love to do my quilting in the ditch with the decorative stitches. The main reason is, so for those of you who don't know what stitch in the ditch is, I'm going to select a straight stitch. I'm going to go ahead and activate the needle down, and I'm using the B foot because it's got those lovely lines that we can use to line things up. So I'm going to make sure that red line on the foot 
is lining up with the seam of my quilt block. So what stitch in the ditch means is that you're going to stitch right in that seam line <clears throat> to quilt these three layers together. Now I've already, just in that tiny bit, gone a little bit on each side of the, of the stitch, uh, of the ditch. So the reason I like to use decorative stitches is that, number one, they add some interest to your, um, to your quilting. And number two, I don't have to be perfectly on the line. Um, it, it, I, you know, you can't see where I've gone a little crooked. So I'm going to use stitch number 73, which is a cute little flower that I like. And you see, I don't have to be quite so careful about exactly where those stitches go because people aren't going to notice if those little connecting stitches aren't all exactly in the right place, in the same place. Uh, you can also use some some of your uh, satin stitches for this. I'm going to try stitch number 61. It's also just a lot of fun to try different stitches this way. Now this is going to take a little bit longer. Anything that has a satin stitch is going to take a little longer, but by all means you can use them when you're quilting your quilt blocks together. So I'm going to go up to the edge here and stop so you can see the differences. Okay, I'm going to stop right about there. Okay, and here we go. There's my quilting. And look, it's added, you know, I can either go crooked like that <laughs> or I can make some pretty decorative stitches and have a beautiful block. Okay, that's all I have to show you on this machine today.